because we're in the city, you are so disconnected from nature. And I think that was one of the great things during COVID is a lot of people yeah. explored their own their own country, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I spent a lot of time in the Eastern Townships and in the Laurentians. Like, I love the, the Laurentians. Montreal. Oh my God, I love the Eastern yeah, Townships. And just spending time at lakes. I mean, mm-hmm. I learned how to swim a little bit better than I already did. Oh, I love <laughs> I, it. I love my low level. I know. <laughs> Yeah, well, out on the ocean, I think you need to be anyway. No disrespect to Vancouver, but uh, Quebec to me is the most well rounded province I think we have in Canada where you get to experience every part of our beautiful country. So, and I'm maybe biased because my guy's from there. <laughs> This is the Without Losing Your Cool podcast. We have entrepreneurs, climate changers, entertainers, and survivors turned thrivers on season two without losing your cool. You do not want to miss a thing. On this episode of Without Losing Your Cool, I want to let you know that some of the topics and the conversations that we'll be having are not suitable for children due to language, or the content. It also might not be suitable for you. So I invite you to please go and check the show notes before you listen, because really what you're here for is to listen without losing your cool. Okay. So I'm so lucky to my listeners and my viewers. I've known Dax for a few years, um, had a super crush on him from the sidelines because my Marina, we use your retail platform, your computer platform. Uh, Yes. Yeah. So we use Lightspeed. Lightspeed. So I, have you know you've been on my radar as an entrepreneur as a tech guy and i've just been watching you go and just been in complete awe because it's been so quick like it seems like i I mean from the outside it's like the iceberg right so from the outside looking at you i'm like wow dax's rise to incredible accomplishment has been so quick which i'm sure it actually is not but where did lightspeed come from i want to get the tech stuff out of the way and then i want to get to the crux of who you really are, which is all your philanthropic work that you're doing for the planet. Yeah, happy to. So Lightspeed, uh, for those for those that don't know, it does we do retail and hospitality software for more complex SM small small medium sized businesses. So like a retail store that's let's sell let's say sells bikes or clothing where there's inventory that you need to manage maybe you know hundreds of thousands of parts or or complex skews with different sizes and so right. on and on the hospitality side it's restaurants that have that are maybe integrated with hotels or have table service where there's multiple courses so all of those are those businesses that have more scale or complexity we we, we have systems for them uh and it kind of started um i mean i was a nerd very early uh <laughs> at, at age 13. Uh, really? my dad used to bring home uh yeah i know my dad used to bring home a mac when i was a kid uh because he was a graphic designer communications uh, person actually yeah. he was a welder at a, at a manufacturing company and then they figured out that back in africa where where, they, where he was born that he was a uh journalist so no. they took him out of the welding shop and then gave him this mac and he brought home the mac and i geeked out and so, That's so by the cool. age of 13 i had my own mac and i was working for an apple developer building software so it, it wrapped quite quickly into nerdhood at 13 <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Uh, and so I was building software. I was building software for uh, mostly retail, uh, retail outfits. Um, and so by the time I was in my twenties, I built a number of different software element components for different retail. Right. A lot of a lot of it was in the Apple dealership space because I was very Mac, very Apple. So I worked for a lot of Apple stores in, in Vancouver, where I'm from, and now and then in Montreal, where I am now. Uh, and so. After a while, after building all these custom systems, I realized there's a lack of systems for the Mac for business. And this is when Apple was really starting to have its like, big ascendancy from right. being nearly bankrupt to a superstar, you know, comeback story. Isn't it, uh, isn't it crazy to even believe that there was a moment in time where Apple might not have existed? Oh, right? yeah. Before Steve Jobs came back, um, I was such a diehard. So I was like, went through all of that as like a, you know, as a very like a, uh, a depressed teen or just an anxious teen of like, oh, is Apple going to survive? And I was just such a, I was such a zealot. Now they, now they don't need my prayers. <laughs> no, no, they're good. They're good. <laughs> so I've, I've stopped. I've stopped. But, uh, but back then I was like, you know, and so, but that so benefited us because when, as they rose, like Lightspeed um, was just such a hot seller from the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sold our software to all the 
Apple dealerships before there were Apple stores. There were dealerships right. all around the world. Our first 200 customers were dealerships. Wow. And then after that, they, what happened then is all those dealerships sold Lightspeed to all their, every store that was opening in their neighborhoods. So they, we had an inbuilt dealer network of 500 of these dealers eventually no that was selling Lightspeed all around the world. That's why we were global so quickly. So quickly. So that's kind I, of the story. And then, yeah, I wondered what, how that happened because, you know, usually that yeah. kind of scale up takes, you know, could take a decade, if not longer. I mean, but it was like out the gate, it felt like I felt like I heard about Lightspeed and, you know, through Natasha, our mutual friend, and she really recommended. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I'm not a geek and computers terrify me. <laughs> and yeah. I can use the program like at the Marine. My, my staff right. doesn't like me to. They prefer to keep me away from it. But <laughs> I have learned, you know, yeah. out of necessity, particularly this season, that I can actually run and use the system, which is for somebody like me, that's empowering, you know, because not everybody has an inclination or can have a natural relationship with computers, you know? So thank you. I appreciate the simplicity and, of the program. And, and that's, that's kind of what the DNA of the, of the company is, is simplifying the complex because you run a complex business, right. but, and, and pe business people are uh, not necessarily, you know, it people, you right. know, um, and they have a lot on their, they have a lot on their plate. So yeah. if we can simplify what's already complex, it's kind of what Apple does, right? The iPhone is a super complex piece of technology, but they simplify it uh, and bring bring um, uh, you know bring it to the bring it to the masses, and mm -hmm. and uh, and that's sort of what we do for business. Okay, I love that. Well, I'm grateful for that, and I actually have to tell you a really funny story about Lightspeed. Um, so I had this, I had this interaction with another small business, and. I was asking for a refund and a refund was warranted and, you know, it wasn't a policy issue, but this girl tried to convince me that her program didn't allow for refund. And mm -hmm. I could see that it was a light speed program. And I looked at her and I said, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to bust your cool here right now. But I have that program at my small business and I'm very familiar <laughs> with the fact that it has the capability to give me a refund. So maybe you want to rethink why you're not wanting to play ball here with me. You know what I mean? So I, I th it exactly. made me laugh because I was like, Dax would never leave somebody in a like that with his, his computer program. <laughs> don't blame me. Don't blame Dax because you don't want to give me a refund. Yeah, exactly. Don't blame Lightspeed. I happen to know. Give Chantel a refund. Exactly. Exactly. So I got my refund. Um, okay. So that's out of the way. Um, so tell me what creating Lightspeed and the success that you had, how did that allow you to create Age of Union? Which I will have, I know I said off camera that we weren't going to really dive into, you know, the backstory because I want to get to the guts of you and what you do. But yeah. I think it's important that you give Age of Union a little bit of you know, let the listeners in on what Age of Union is. And then I encourage you sure. to please go and, and dig into the incredible work that Dax and Age of Union and everybody who's on board with him there are doing for our beautiful planet. So, but where, where, where Age of Union really started was uh, back when I was a teenager, back when I was, you know, also geeking out on the, on the, on the computer side, yeah. um, I was always, you know, very tuned into nature. Uh, I grew up camping. My, my, my family was refugees from Africa. And so when they came wow. to BC, uh, we spent a lot of our childhood, you know, in nature. Uh, I, I, I saw in the news that they were clear cutting old growth forests in Vancouver Island. I was disturbed by that, that idea that these, you know, cathedrals of thousand year old trees are just being, um, cut for, you know, for things like toilet paper. And, and, uh, it was just so depressing. Yeah. Uh, so me and my stepbrother, we drove across the Island, um, and we were able to save these, these protests called the war, called the war of the woods. We were able to save Plaquemine Sound and I revisited wow. every couple of years. And it is really, really, um, these are like cathedrals of, of old growth for trees. It's, it's insane. But, what I experienced on the way on that drive to Clackwood Sound as a 16 year old was hours and hours and hours of clear cut moon, moonscapes. Uh, and that guard me. It's, it shocked me. And I knew that when I had the resources, when I had the experience in life that I would, I would dedicate my life to the conservation and make sure that we were doing everything we could to make sure that we, we come together for nature. And, and it's, and now, you know, uh, all these years later, it seems even more, 
um, like this has to be the time, this has to be the moment for action, or we will lose some of these places and lose some of these species. I know it's, uh, it's really, it's jarring when you allow yourself the space to focus on these issues, because it's so out of sight, out of mind, right? Like you have to journey to see the clear cutting. You have to journey to yeah. the ocean to see the trash floating. You have to like every, it's so easy. We, you know, we've been distracted into devices that make yeah. our world so small and it's so easy to exist only there, you know, in this really condensed bubble of life. And so yeah. many of us, and, and, you know, and I'm guilty of this as well is like, I, it's overwhelming, you know, what needs to happen. Like there's so many causes, there's so much need. And you and I have, you know, mm -hmm. a shared interest in artists for peace and justice and Haiti and what's yeah. happening in Haiti and, and the kids. And it's like, you know, even there, it's like, great. We have a school where we're educating them, but they're being overrun by plastic bottles. Like, you know what I mean? So how do we give yeah. them back their country to even exist in? You know, they're it, it, literally when you go there, you feel like you're wading through, and I'm talking like, not like bottles, like we see along, mm -hmm. you know, our, our ravines yeah. and along our freeways, like knee deep in some instances. And, um, so I think for me, the, when I had a similar experience, not, not where it was intentionally done by man, but back in California, when we had the fires that were through Malibu and my first sort of aha moment, like this is actually happening by man for like you're saying for consumerism was when we drove through one of the canyons, Canaan, which had, you know, had lots of life in it and lots of growth, even for California being desert, but it was also moonscape and it's eerie, you know, it's, you can't help, mm -hmm. but then start to think, well, what's the greater impact of the loss, you know? Um, right. So right. I appreciate because you, you I appreciate that this is on your heart to make these differences because so often, you know, we can, and especially when we become successful and we build, you know, hundreds of million dollars, companies worth hundreds of millions of dollars in the way that you have to just go and live your life in luxury and, you know, and you can avoid a lot of these, a lot of this discomfort of knowing, right? Um, mm -hmm. So tell me- Yeah, you, you can live in a bubble. Yeah, much more easily when you have wealth um, and, you know, you can justify not doing anything because you're so busy when you're, you know, when you're running empires. Um, mm. So tell me what age of union, what are the projects that you guys are working on? And I would love to know the why behind what you picked. So a, a little bit of like how we picked the first projects. Uh, so, you know, I told you it started as a book and then it became the organization. So in between there was COVID. Right? right. And so I did these Instagram lives um, because we were giving the book away for free as an ebook and then as a as a as an audio book. And I thought, you know, we're so disconnected from nature. That's why this pandemic has happened to some degree. Yeah. Um, and so let's get let's give away the books. People can reflect um, on, uh, on on some of these thoughts around nature. And so I was interviewing some of these on the ground conservationists because I felt like they fit the, the change maker um, that we're talking about in the book. The books, the subtitle of the book is. It's Age of Union, Igniting the Change Maker. And so I was interviewing some of these change makers on the ground and they became our first projects. Mm -hmm. You know, so the first yeah. projects were Jungle Keepers. Um, you know, it's a, it's a it's you know, the founders were two two uh two Peruvians and then um uh, a, a New Yorker and uh and a woman also from Montreal. Like so a, a very kind of eclectic group. Yeah. Um that's that's now actually with our help protecting two hundred and fifty square kilometers of the Amazon. Uh, and it's and this this area can expand expand. It's a, it's a good news story right. in the Amazon where you rarely hear good news, you know. And it's yeah. actually a really good model of what can be done. So that was like from an Instagram live that, of an interview, and I was like, this is the kind of project that's not doesn't have a real budget. Um, right. That's like taking donations online, and we can we can with effort we can actually um, in, make sure that they can have a real five year plan, you know. And yeah. that's. Uh, so it's transformational for them. So that's like one of the projects and every other project sort of similar to that. There's Nature Conservancy of Canada where we have two projects, you know, both in Quebec. One is to restore the, the St. Lawrence River, which, uh, you know, they do 25 to 30 projects a year along the river to, to restore the natural filters before 
our polluted water reaches the whales, for example. Right. Um, there's another area called Canuck in Quebec, which is like 265 square kilometer nature reserve in BC, two amazing areas. Um, there's another uh, project, of course, in uh, Haiti, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, we're doing a, a ref, you know, it's been very denuded of all trees in Haiti, as you, as you yes, know, it's a very uh, sad yeah, situation. It's very sad. So we did, we're, we're doing a reforestation project, but we know that people are, are hungry. People are starving. They don't have subsistence. Yeah. Um, and so we've also, as part of the project, are doing agroforestry. So planting trees, but also planting um, planting trees that are fruit bearing and, and that can produce food within the forest, as well as subsistence gardens. So I love that's, that. that has a bit more of a humanitarian element to it. Um, Congo is similar. We have a project in Congo, which we're actually about to release a film on. Uh, oh, no way. And that actually is... Oh, yeah, wow. so that's that's our next film. Uh, we, we've actually this is our fourth film. We've actually been pretty busy in, in this last year. I love it. So, I love uh, it. These, these ten these ten projects are are, are really like uh, uh, producing a lot of great content for that we can share and for educate sure. and just make people aware. So there's Congo. There's Indonesia. Um, what am I missing? Then there's our ship, our Sea Shepherd ship, which is uh, protecting um, marine wildlife off the coast of Africa in collaboration with Liberian and, and governments of Gabon. Um, so there's a lot of illegal fishing that's coming and scooping up all the fish um, and basically leaving nothing for the, the families that live along the coast. So a lot of these toddlers are coming from Asia. Uh, and so we're disrupting that. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're ruining those fishing uh, expeditions and, and making sure that those Coast Guards can come in and arrest arrest those trawlers. Yeah. So it's very action oriented. And, and you've seen, I think, our film called Caught. Where, I did. I did. show some of this. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's, it's good. We can, we can show real results. Yeah. And I, and, and I think that that's really powerful because going back to my point earlier, where it's just like, there's such a sense, you know, for somebody like me, who's such an empath, who's such a feeler, who's like, I want to do everything. I want to help everybody. I want to save yeah. all the critters. Um, you know, there, you can be paralyzed by overwhelm, yeah. right. Of like, well, where, where do I start? And what I found fascinating about watch when I watched caught, um, mm -hmm. was so much happened. I, I went through such an emotional ride and, you know, that's, you're supposed to with documentaries and especially when it relates to, you know, other, other beings that live on the planet with us. And, yeah. you know, it's interesting to me that we get in these loops where we're being directed mm. by lobbyists to, you know, okay, eat less animal protein. And, and you guys refer, you, you say this in the movie, which I thought was really, really interesting where it's like, see, like we've been trained to think that it's seafood and that it's seafood. okay to take it out and consume it without any thought. And it's true that they, they, they wanted to divert us from eating animal protein. So they put us onto fish and seafood mm -hmm. and yeah. which is really sea life. Like these, without these yeah. beings in the ocean, the ocean dies which is, is, yeah. you know, overwhelming, but so you have two boats, you have age of union and you have sea shepherd. Are there other boats like you guys out there interacting and, you know, cutting these massive trollers off? Like it's, it's just two of you. Well, it's, it's, it's actually one boat. So it's, it's, a, it's the MY age of union ship is run by sea shepherd. Ah, okay. They have a fleet of, uh, they have a fleet of about 10 ships. Okay. Um, but there's literally 10 ships and there's, Four million fishing vessels in the world. That's what I mean. So, uh, a, a lot of what a lot of what Sea Shepherd is doing is they're doing arrests and they're doing um, you know photography of what's happening on the ocean so that governments can see what's happening, people can see. So obviously they're not going to be able to to go up against every one of those fishing vessels, but they need to help people understand what's happening out there. You know, we'd never get away with this on land to have a, uh, have nets that are kilometers and kilometers long and then just pull everything out of the ocean. Right. You know, so yeah. Can you imagine it's, it's if you were people have to be aware of, could you imagine driving along the road and instead of cows grazing in the field, you're like, Oh, look at those cows grazing in the field. There were nets lifting them and craning them into like conveyor belts to process them. It would never, it would never fly. It would never no. fly. And I love that you address and that in the film. a lot of it gets thrown phone. away on the ocean. Yeah. So much so I waste. I think it's like, you know, the, it's a, a lot of waste. So it's really sad. So Very sad. I don't know. It's it, th These are things that, um, that I think we can shed light on. And the one thing that's really been interesting at this last year of investing in these projects, out of the 10 projects I've visited eight, 
So, and I know you talk about showing up. Um, mm -hmm. It's so important, I think, to really understand something by going there, you know, and, and spending time with the people and actually, and actually really uplifts them, you know, because it, it, when you're do, working conservation, you experience a lot of losses. Uh, and mm -hmm. so I get a lot of hope for the planet by seeing them do, do stuff that really is meaningful. They get a lot of energy for me. Actually, in fact, the people in Congo said nobody's ever come here. Uh, there's a, nobody's ever visited. They've written checks, and that's amazing. But nobody's ever come here because wow. actually, when we went there, there was actually a war breaking out between Congo and, and Rwanda. So it's not surprising that nobody's right, 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 is, right. It's quite dangerous, but yeah. Uh, but it's so helpful to understand the proposal is one thing, but when you see the social, economic, and um, uh, you know, political reality of some of these places, you really understand what it takes to save the world in mm. these in these in these spots. Yeah. Um, and well, the one project I didn't mention, which was, which is like, it shows like what one person can do in, in Trinidad, there's a woman, Suzanne, um, who, when she saw leatherback turtles, these are like one ton turtles, the mother's coming up to lay their eggs. They can only do this after age 30. When she yeah. saw uh, people hacking these, these, um, these turtles, um, for me 30 years ago, she was fist fighting them on the beach. Oh my God. Fast forward 30 years. Now she has the whole community transformed into saving these turtles and has a whole tourism around these hundred million year old species. So that's the kind of inspiring story where mm -hmm. one woman can save a species and transform uh, the entire community's livelihood mm -hmm. and how they interact with nature. So that's the kind of thing where by going, you hear these stories and it fuels you to do more. Right. Yeah. Well, and, th and that's what I was thinking while I was watching Cot. I was sitting there thinking, it's so, it's so insular when you're, you're trying to drive impact, when you have to be on the ground to, to be fighting. And like you yeah. said, with the ocean, it's so far removed. You know what I mean? Like, how do you, yeah. how does that message get relayed when you can't let up for five minutes to like go on tour to tell people what's happening out in the ocean? You know, how these dolphins, 10,000 are getting, you know, slaughtered a year. And, you know, I love the visuals that you use in the film of trays and trays and trays of, you know, sea life for sale mm -hmm. because it can only yeah. live for so long out of the ocean anyway. So not only right. is there tremendous waste in the catching of mm -hmm. the, the sea yeah. life, but then there's incredible waste. And we see this in all our Absolutely. food, right? Like pretty food goes in the waste bin. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't even make it out to the mm -hmm. shelves for people to buy. And it's just, it feels when you're watching films like your film caught, it just, and I get, you know, and I don't want to be all Debbie down, but it feel, it does feel like hopeless in a lot of ways. So, you know, it, you know, what can we do? Like, what can I do here in Toronto? And what can my listeners who are mm -hmm. listening and watching us right now and watching you, like, what can we do to be a part of the change that we desperately need? Because I mean, the, the stats in the film are horrifying. Like, what is it? 300,000? Oh, dolphins and, whale. dolphins like, and marine mammals whales? Are, are killed in the process of, of, of fishing. Yeah. Uh, and that's just that's just the marine mammals. Yeah. Right. I mean, what, what we can do is like, I think that we're very much on autopilot in, in our society and mm. we're quite busy. So um, we kind of do a lot of things without thinking. So little by little, if we can be intentional about the things that we do and about the things that we eat and the choices that we make, we can start to um, reduce. Um, you know, if you know, if tomorrow you can cut fish out of your diet, you can cut, you know, animal protein out of your diet. Great. But there's also like 8 billion people on the planet can't all be eating fish three times a day or, or you know, mm -hmm. used to be even just one or two generations ago that, um, that, that people would eat it once a week. You know, and mm -hmm. so can we go back to that? I think that there was a there was a, a, a captain, Captain Thomas Lacaza, the yeah. captain of the Age of Union, was saying that um, that we're eating you know three times the amount of fish that we that we could uh, that we that we should be allotted per per year. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we should eat one third uh, if we if we must still eat fish. If, right. if we could just reduce a lot to start, you know. And mm -hmm. so be conscious of the choices that you make. Be understand that that in order to get uh, a shrimp cocktail. That they killed. I don't know if you remember that scene about shrimp. I, I have do. never seen that before. Yeah. Um, to, to get shrimp in Gabon um, that, that ends up on the plates in Europe, they kill 99% of what they catch to pick out the shrimp. 
and the rest of it gets obviously broomed off with the, the, the ship dead. And that's like the kind of thing where you're like, do I really, do I really support that? You know, do I really want to order that? You yeah. know, and, and that makes the, um, you know, makes ordering something else or thinking about your choices, it gives it a little bit more context when you understand. Mm. Um, and I think that those, those decisions are their own reward, you know, right. You feel good about being in alignment in union with the planet, with your choices and you're less on autopilot. And in an age where we feel a little bit lost and disconnected, you can have meaning and purpose all day by having meaning and purpose in your decisions. I agree. I agree. Well, and this is in, in, in to, to that point of, of, making decisions that have meaning and purpose. The the thing that, and I don't know anybody who's watching, you maybe relate to this too, is that, um, you know, I made a move to incorporate fish so that I would be eating less, mm -hmm. you know, animal protein. And when I red do meat. Yeah. red meat and, and, you know, and when I do have red I meat, the same. I make sure it's grass yeah. free range, you know, and they, they have a quality yeah. of life while they're living. And, and, you know, you're trying to hit, tick all the boxes, um, you know, and for some people, it's just not sustainable to be completely vegan. And then veganism has its issues, like cutting down entire rainforests to grow quinoa. You know what I mean? The Chilean government has cut off water access to its people because they're using the water, which is, you know, not a, in high uh levels of in chile to water produce you know so the people are having to buy water and if they run out before their delivery comes that's too bad for them you know what i mean so like when you yeah. try it every if you're and i say this to people all the time like it feels weighted because as a human being if you're six feet above ground you're having up you're you're leaving a carbon footprint you're having a negative impact yeah. on on the planet and it's like you know, it, and, and, and I know I, I'm hopeful and I, and I, I trust in God, planet, divine universe, all of it that, you know, mm -hmm. he's put us in place and we are all on the planet at this exact moment in time because there's trust that we can bring about the change that is needed. Um, so I don't want to act like I, I don't think I can help. I know I can help. I just, want to know, like for any of us who are maybe feeling like I thought I was doing great by, t you know, making these changes and shifts. And you say in the film that there is some sustainable ways to fish, but I think it was in relation to people who need the fish literally to survive. Right. Was that, am I correct in remembering that piece of the film? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, I think that, um, when we're talking about the, those coastal communities in, um, like in Africa where we're arresting the trawlers that are, that are, you know, that are basically ripping everything out of the ocean. There is enough fish for those, uh, for those, um, for that artisanal fishing, you know, for, right. um, for subsistence, you know, um, you know, for the, for, for those coastal communities. Um, I think that, that we have to think about how much we can reduce in our diet in the West. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, we, we, um, we, how, how much fish do we actually really think is in the ocean that 8 billion people can have fish all the time? It's just, that yeah. doesn't exist for, for, a, a, for a, that much longer, right. you know? And so I think we have to be, I think they've done a really good job, job of lobbying, as you say, to like cut red meat and, and, and focus on fish. It's healthier for you. It's this, yeah. that, um, it's actually the least sustainable because it's, um, you're catching wild animals, right? You know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's there is, I think, um, and I think it requires a little bit of research. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that you, you, uh, everybody's expected to know everything about all their choices tomorrow. Right. But if you can understand, you know, um, uh, I, I have less of an issue of eating fish if, if it's if it's locally caught, you know, from a local lake, a local river where it's not um, coming from trawlers. Right. Um, if it's if it's locally sourced, um, if there's, it's often going to cost more money, you know, because it's not done in a way that's that's mass produced. These are like factory farms on the ocean. These trawlers, uh, yeah. especially the super trawlers. So yeah. if you can, if, if you're, if your seafood is very cheap for a reason. So sometimes some of those more sustainable ways will cost you more money. Just as you were saying with the mm -hmm. grass fed um, uh, options that you buy with your organic options, they might be a little bit more money, but if you are eating less meat, less fish, and you went for those options, you know that they're coming from the right places. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of vegetables and, 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 and veganism, there's never any any scenario where, because livestock eat so much produce, 
there's never a scenario where the pro the uh, us eating produce is going to be m more impactful or as impactful as us eating animals that eat a ton of produce first. Right. You know, the yeah. just that going that route, it's not equivalent. You know, mm. you know, eating vegetarian is way, way less impactful than, well, and it um, was than, it just, than eating animals. It was interesting in the film because you guys do talk about how even they the fishing has overfishing has rolled into yeah. how we feed our animals. Like that there's right. they, so they take not only are they feeding notice. us fish yeah. and sea life, but they're just spreading it around, giving it to all the animals. And you, and, and you know what? I'm guilty of that. I yeah. I'm like my dogs eat raw because, you know, I'm trying to give them a healthy life mm -hmm. so they don't have corn and all this byproduct and GMO and, you know, doing my part for the planet to keep pesticides down in, in how I feed my dogs even, you know what I mean? And, and, and then yeah. I'm like, oh, my mind's blown because yes, there's a packet of the food that I can choose for them. That's fish dinner. You know, and I'm like, oh, wow. I, you know, you don't, it's, it's, I love, I love that you're shedding a light because we've spent so many years talking about plastic straws and plastic bags and mm -hmm. our yeah. waste. And, you know, something that's driven me crazy as somebody who's spent half their, you know, half a year every year in Malibu was people come to the beach, they bring stuff, right? They bring their food, they bring their coffee, they bring their alcohol, they bring mm -hmm. all this stuff. And then they leave it. Like there's no ferry coming crazy. to pick yeah. up your trap. You came with it. How can you no. not leave with it? So, I mean, we're all very much aware of waste, human yeah. waste and trash mm -hmm. on our beaches, but it's so right. We've not, I know personally for me, you know, I love the ocean and I love, I, I sit there for, for hours. I would sit and meditate and do my readings and watch dolphins and watch the sea lions mm -hmm. and the whales and, and just be so thankful for it. But to think that there's a possibility even in our lifetime that that could all be gone is horrifying. Mm -hmm. And without losing your cool, we've got your gift giving needs covered, whether it's a holiday gift, if it's a support gift, if it's a little extra love that somebody in your life needs gift, or a parent who needs a little more guidance, advice, and the knowing that they are not alone out there in their parenting journey, we have got you covered. If you know somebody who is deepening their relationship to self, grab them the self-love bundle. It includes the Loving Yourself Without Losing Your Cool book, Loving Yourself journal that accompanies the book, and Love Notes for Adults. If you have somebody in your life who's expecting or has a little from zero to 10, then the Raising Kids Bundle is the perfect gift set for them. It comes with the Raising Your Kids Without Losing Your Cool and Love Notes for Littles. If you have a parent in your inner circle who is heading into tween and teendom, boy, have we got the gift set for you. Parenting Your Teens Without Losing Your Cool comes with Love Notes for Tweens or Teens. You get to choose. All of this is available for you at ChantelBisson.com. If you're shopping ChantelBisson.com for the very first time, don't forget to add yourself to the newsletter to claim your shopping discount code. Go now. Mm -hmm. well, well, you touched on spirituality, and I think that um, it's a, for me, it's not, it's, to me, nature and spirituality are the same thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. when we are connected to the greater union of everything on this planet, we are making those conscious, intentional decisions that are in alignment with the health of the planet and the mm -hmm. health of other species. Um, and that's actually, um, that's actually a really be beautiful journey to go on. And I, it's, there's no expectation that you need to know everything tomorrow, mm -hmm. but never give up on do, trying to get better and trying to do more. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe you did something that you learned, okay, it's not as Im impactful. We're all learning. Right. You know? But don't stop. You know, we, we, we can't as a species give up or stop. It's mm -hmm. just, that's what we're trying to really do with age of you know that it's not too late, but show right. that it's, that things can be done, you know, and right. that, uh, there's great examples of us turning the corner. Right. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if 8 billion individuals, um, act as change makers instead of individualists, um, which we're trained to do by our society is, um, mm -hmm. is, you know, act for yourself and right. satisfy your, your, your own, um, your own desires, right? That's, right. Um, the, the world would be different. And I think it will take us time to get there. But people do watch 
other people that they admire and their behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll model themselves after the things that you're doing. And I think that we can we can be influencers in the best sense of the word mm -hmm. uh, by by uh, by spreading that information, by making certain choices, uh, and that's that's it. That's a way to be spiritually in a, in a time when people don't have a clear definition of what that means anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's something that I think we can do to really be a part of the bigger. Uh, and it's, we're so blessed with this planet, you know, so sometimes when you really step back, a lot yeah. of astronauts um, have remarked on how, when they look at the earth uh, from far away and they realize how much of darkness there is and blackness and emptiness, and look, they're often expecting to be like all sorts of stars everywhere and like lots of galaxies. It's like, we're alone in, in this like very, very big black space. And it's mm -hmm. this precious little, little orb, you know, that actually has so many miracles on it. So they, many like, miracles. Remember, so many yeah. miracles. So sometimes you need that perspective to yeah. realize how precious it is, you know? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I feel, I, for me personally, something that I, I focus my, my heart on is just, a gratitude of how much the earth does for us every single day. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I try to pull back from there and ask myself questions. What am I doing to make a difference? Like something for me is, you know, I own a Marina on a lake and, you know, I went through the very, very, um, uh, I guess it was, I wouldn't say it was excruciating. It's complicated, difficult, but to check my clean level, you know, how clean is my marina operating mm. on this live body of water yeah. with so much right. life in it, you know, because even though it's a, a lake and it's a closed lake, it's dark, you know, in the ocean, if you're fortunate enough to have clear ocean, you can see the life right there in your under right. it, 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 under your feet you know but in in darker bodies of water it's hard it just looks like water you know you forget there and 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 in the film cut you guys talk about it so beautifully about the eco the lie like it's alive like from the algae the plane like everything yeah. is reliant mm -hmm. on the other and so that helps me to be reminded that yeah i have a i have a marina and yes we're operating gas uh, m you know boats on it which is not ideal obviously at all but you know so i i buy the the best gas you know the cleanest gas we use only mm -hmm. organic our eco products to clean the boats you, you know it's like every yeah. you know every little thing that we can do while we're also taking pleasure because the planet is here for us to enjoy Right. And, and to be yeah. mm -hmm. in union with it, because I think that's how it's mm -hmm. intended. Like, you know, she's beautiful. She's magic. She's miracle, you know, and I had a guest on my first season and he's, um, a grounding expert. Like that's his thing is, um, and I really encourage people to, you know, even if you're in a big city, you know, we have got ravines and belt lines, like make a commitment to spend more time doing things in nature because when you do align and spend time with nature, you, you respect it more. Right. I think. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that's the one thing that you can do to feel more connected to it because we're in the city, you are so disconnected from nature. And I think that was one of the great things during COVID is a lot of people yeah. explored their own, their own country. Right. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in, the Eastern townships and in the Laurentians, like I love know, like, the Laurentians. Montreal. Oh my God. I love the Eastern yeah, townships and just spending time at lakes. I mean, mm. I learned how to swim a little bit better than I already can. Oh, <laughs> I love I, it. My, my, my low level. I know <laughs> I, have a sh I, mean, I have a shit, but I can't swim that well. <laughs> you you <laughs> gotta, you, a, you a life jacket. <laughs> yeah. Well out on the ocean, I think you need to be anyway. Um, but, um, no, I, I love, well, first off Quebec is, I think, and no disrespect to Vancouver, but uh, Quebec to me is the most well-rounded province I think we have in Canada where you get to experience every part of our beautiful country. So, and I'm maybe biased because my guy's from beautiful there, nature. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, very beautiful. Yeah. nature. Um, so let me ask you with all the different projects that you have going on, what would you say to people who are listening to you for the very first time, what would you say in your opinion, being boots on the ground is most urgent? Like what message would you want people to take away from our time today as the most urgent change that we need to all get behind? 
for the betterment of the planet? Um, yeah, I think there's a lot, like we talked about it a little bit. There's a lot of things in your personal, and there's a lot of things that you, choices that you make on a daily basis mm -hmm. that can be more intentional. Uh, I mean, like in terms of the, the containers you use, the transportation you use, the things that you eat, you know, those are things that I think um, we can all become better people and we'd actually be happier mm. um, if we knew that we were more in union aligned with the planet. I agree. In terms of nature, uh, in, in terms of the planet, I think one of the one of the messages we're really trying to get out there is that conservation is the frontline fight against climate change. You know, that I agree protecting with that nature too. Is, is actually because some of the emission stuff is very abstract and it's hard for people to get their head around. Um, and, you know, you think, oh, we, there's no way that we're all going to have a electric vehicle in the next five years so we're, we're basically doomed there are so many nature-based solutions uh, that we're trying to popularize uh, you know um, you'll see some more content from us in the next little while Great. and we're speaking at COP15 this, this week but when you save nature and protect it um, it's a, these are natural carbon sinks that, 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 that segregate more and more nature so if there are things in your in your community and I've seen some amazing community driven projects about um, local biodiversity. Mm. Um, there are some amazing things that, that, that you can get involved with. There's beach cleanups. There's, uh, um, there's things you can do for local parks. There's, there's all sorts of volunteer opportunities with our projects. If you want to do something with Nature Conservancy of Canada or Sea Shepherd or Jungle Keepers, there's all sorts of cool things that, that can be done. Um, and take your kids, your grandkids, um, yeah. and, and get them connected to nature. Go out in nature, as you were saying. Yeah. Those are, those are, you know, since we're so urban these days, um, I, I told you that story about Clockwood Sound, you know, uh, that, 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 that love of nature came from my parents taking me camping. Um, but a lot of younger people aren't having though, that exposure to nature, mm -hmm. um, in order to care about nature later in their life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. if we can spend more time in nature, we'll care about it. We'll protect it. You protect what you love ultimately. Right. Oh, a hundred thousand percent. You protect what you love. And I think too, I think it, 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 what you say is so spot on. It's about harvesting connection at a young age, you know, and mm -hmm. you're blessed. See, I, uh, for me, I was raised by a single mom in, in an apartment and we were outside all the time because we were latchkey kids and our, you know, my mom was a single mom. So she worked full time and, mm. and in the summer we couldn't afford can't you know programs so we stayed at our little community um and you know mm. there was a pool there so i was outside so i was outdoors but i didn't have you know the experience of camping or cottaging or boating yeah. or you know any, can you, any of those real and like certainly i didn't ski or do any winter sports and i think it's so great that we live in a time where there is a lot of community offered programming because a, a mm -hmm. lot of times, and I, I don't say this disrespectfully at all, but a lot of times for somebody like me, a kid who grew up in a very low income, you know, family, mm -hmm. these things aren't accessible to you, right? Like, because these, a lot of that connection to nature and the ability to go and spend time in nature involves either parents with time or involves yeah. the yeah. economic ability to afford it. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that, and maybe I'm onto something here that something, maybe a program um, or a charity that can yeah. start to take place. Sounds or, like a program, actually. Right? It mm -hmm. sounds like a program. Maybe you the and kids. I could do it together yeah. is like, you know, taking yeah. urban kids and giving them mm -hmm. that ability to access nature. Because I know for me, I didn't have it. I didn't even know about any of this stuff really until I got into a relationship with a man from Quebec who grew up in the forest of the Eastern townships. You know what I mean? Like he went into the forest and that was his playground. So for him, he's always been rooted in nature, you know, whereas I right. had never been. Yeah. So maybe there is a program that, that can take place that needs to take place to organically bring that connection back to nature in a way where kids don't feel guilty and overwhelmed by having to go out and save it. Like it, like you said, you protect what you love, right? Yeah. There's an idea. And I think there's like, there's a lot of um, anxiety in our society today and a lot of uh, oh my God. Uh, um, these social ills and, and um, uh, pressures and so on on young people. Yeah. And a lot of it is comes from our phones and from, from yeah. the media and nature is a natural remedy to that. 
you know, when you when you realize you're sort of part of something that's much bigger, mm-hmm. uh, and that there's something that's much older and much more, um, much more uh, that we still can be in awe of. You know, mm-hmm. there's very few things that we're in awe of. A mountain can actually still inspire awe oh my gosh. in a human being. But there's we, we everything else we think we're in control of. But yeah. at the end of the day, there's so much anxiety in our society because we don't feel in control. So nature can can actually give us some perspective. Mm-hmm. It can be very healing. And I think that if we foster that that connection with young people early with, with nature, I think for them it'll be something that they uh, that, that can be a real tool for them uh, to to live a healthier life. Mm-hmm. Oh, and mental, in terms of their mental health. Oh yeah, I mean spot on. I you know I have three daughters. That are, you've met them, two of them. They're always at um, yeah. Arts, Peace, and Justice. But um, you know I witness the difference in their lives, and you know and they're grown, and they they weren't introduced to social media at a very young age. You know they were teens when it started to really come into play and take off. And I have to say that I I can tell when they're living more in their phones than living in their lives Mm. because I notice an incredible change in their spirit, in their confidence, in their, um, Mm -hmm. like how much they're getting accomplished in a day. Like it's, it's a noticeable shift. And so, you know, going back to the point about urban kids, not really having that same access to disconnect, um, you know, they, there's a lot more time spent on a device or a TV or video gaming. And, you know, just, again, just disconnecting not only from nature, but yourselves, right? Like we're, we're yeah. creating a generation. I fear that, um, it's more organic to disconnect from everything than it is to find connection. And I just mm, wonder yes. how do we, as a, as a computer geek guy, what do you think we can do about that element? How do we get kids to connect back to Just self? Connect. Yeah. How do we get them to connect back to self? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, this is ultimately, um, and, and we, we've touched on it a little bit. These are, this is ultimately a spiritual question, right? It's mm-hmm. the, it's about, um, connecting to, um, Connecting to community, connecting to, to the self and to, and to removing oneself from this, uh, this media world, this, uh, this, this, uh, very, this cycle, you know, um, mm. the social media cycle, this, um, online cycle, mm. you know, it's, mm. it, it, we, we have to have people doing real life gatherings, real life meetings, connect, connecting with nature. These are things that actually are so important I know. to be a healthy human being, I know. to be having real mental health. Um, I feel like as we uh, build companies, like even Age of Unions, we built very much remotely digital. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, the amount that you can accomplish when you're in front of somebody, with somebody. Um, obviously, the digital world has enabled us to do some amazing things. Right. Um, and has enabled us to have more time, you know, um, theoretically more time with our family, more time with our friends. So if we have this extra time because of technology, why don't we make sure that we prioritize that time to gather mm-hmm. and to interact and to, um, and to maybe sometimes disconnect, but for your own, for, to fill your own soul, mm-hmm. you know, and, and make sure that I think you have to create your own program. You know, you have to create your own path in terms of like, how are you going to invest in yourself spiritually? Mm-hmm. And that is a combination of gathering with people and spending time, um, disconnected, uh, for your, for yourself. Mm-hmm. I, I learned actually, um, that, I forgot that I enjoy spending time on my own. You know, I got right. COVID this summer and I, and I did a little kayak trip cause I, I was not that sick. Yeah. I just, I yeah. just tested positive. Right. I did a kayak trip and I was like, wow, um, having these three, four hours on a river by myself, I forgot that I don't have to always plan something with somebody else. Yep. Sometimes I can do things and it had nothing to do with my phone. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't to like make a little photo shoot of, mm-hmm. of, of, uh, yeah. of it. It was just to be on my own and be on this river. You know, you know what? It's um, it's interesting. Like, you forget those things. You forget how much you yeah. enjoy your own companionship. Yeah, or maybe you haven't discovered that yet. But here's the thing, too, and I I love I love that you're saying that because when I'm up north and I'm surrounded by nature, trees and like cathedral sized trees, like you're talking about, and just the lake and and fresh air, I find. But I'm also incredibly busy because that I'm 
working, I'm running my marina and there's a million things to do and it's a short season, it's a short window, it's everything's firing and all, all cylinders. I find that my days are much better when I get out on the paddleboard, when the lake is quiet, mm. before yes. everybody is on the water and I just paddle around with my thoughts, no thoughts, like you said, not because I'm creating content, but because I'm creating content, <laughs> you know, yeah. internal content. No. Um, yeah. But going back a little bit. Recharging. Recharging, yeah. Um, so what I wanted to say is going back to what we were talking about with regards to spirituality and we might need to do another episode because this might open a whole can of worms, but it almost feels to me like even that's been lobbied, the removal of connection to spirit, or it's mm -hmm. been, you know, and I think a lot of people are disillusioned because they think spirituality is religion and they're not. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So this when, is a whole other can of worms. Yeah. Right. So in their quest it's, to not be religious, just... they're also not even being spiritual. And what is too bad is that because we've um, secularized uh, from religion, we've actually forgotten what spirituality is uh, is and yep. what it's what it's what what a role it plays in the in our connectivity to everything mm -hmm. um, and our and our relationship with other people with ourselves with, with the greater mm -hmm. uh, and there's no there's no real substitute um, there's right. there's no modern option right there's mm -hmm. There's um, there's a there's a, a mix of things that people try to put together in terms of like new agey stuff and mm -hmm. yoga and like but um, but I think it's everyone has their own journey and mm -hmm. so there's no there's no set prescription for it. Um, I think there is some there is some gaps there in terms of uh, in, in terms of what what how to create a modern sense of spirituality for oneself. I think it's a huge topic. I tried yeah. to address it a little bit in Age of Union, but I do think a lot of it has to do with um, uh, us reconnecting with nature. That's a I big agree. component. I agree too. Uh, and to get back to um, us being once again feeling small in in the in the in the in the and being in awe of, of what is around us, mm -hmm. uh, but then also being a contributor in a positive way to it because we're also here um, to make to improve the world. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah. Uh, and so we're small, but we're also we also have an important role to play. Um, I agree. On the planet. I agree. And I've got to tell you that when I am more connected to nature, I'm more confident. Like, I just feel like I'm like, mm. oh, Mother Earth's got me. She's got me. I'm good. Okay. So we're going to wrap up. Um, and I, I, I'm going to have you back for season three because I do want to get into this spirituality connection to the planet. I, it's a good one. Um, I wish I had hours and hours. Every once in a while, I get a guess. I'm like, <laughs> I wish I could pull, I wish I could pull a Joe Rogan and just go three hours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah. but okay. So I do something at the end of every episode with each guest. I ask this question, dead or alive, if you could sit down with somebody, who would it be and spend time with? Uh, you know, my, my hero today is Paul Watson. He, you know, he saved whales, but I just had yeah. a birthday dinner with him. Uh, he's the head, the founder of Sea Shepherd. Yeah, he's well, awesome. So that's one hero of mine. Mm -hmm. Really incredible. But the other hero that I had growing up was Steve Jobs, you know, and that was yeah. just somebody that brought um, technology together with art and design. Both mm -hmm. of those things are so important to me and just, Somebody that's just redefined things. And I think if you were alive, you would have a, probably a bit of a different vision for iPhone as it developed to actually save us and save, our, <laughs> save us from this mental health crisis. Because, right. You know, he's a visionary. Um, so I think that would be my choice. Okay, cool. I love that. I love both of those. Now I have a final question. Um, each guest also, and normally they write it down, but because you and I are on Zoom and you can't write it down, um, I ask you my current guest to give one piece of advice that I will then parlay to the next guest. And you don't know who the next guest is and they won't know who it came from. So if there's one piece of advice you could give the next guest who you don't even know, what would that be? I'm going to type it in my phone because I don't have a pen. I would say that because uh, lately I've been telling people to, that something that's been a, a big factor of my last year is showing up, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, we've, we've invested in lots of projects, but actually the real, the real importance of what we did was show up for those projects mm -hmm. and go there and understand it. It was a benefit to me, us and me and, and me personally in terms of like being so enriched by the experience, but also really important for the other person. 
uh, really uplifting somebody else. And there's energy coming from both sides, showing up, especially in an age where we're not physically with each other a lot, right. um, is actually a really important thing, uh, especially in 2022, 2023. I like that. I like that. I'm writing it out so I can share it. And then I'm giving you the advice that was written by a guest that was on before you. And I don't know how you are if you're a fighter. I'm a big fighter. I used to be. I turned the corner and now I, I'm a conversationalist. I like to get to solutions. Um, don't yeah. argue because when you argue, there's a winner and there's a loser. And that's all coming mm. from ego. But when you disagree, you are disagreeing by trying to solve the issue. Well, right? Yeah. Rather than fighting to that's win, amazing. you're disagreeing yeah. to come to a solution, which is beautiful. Come to a solution. Which is what you're that's doing good. with that's Age true. of Union. Everything you're mm -hmm. doing is you're trying to come to a solution. You're right. Arguments are just, they're, 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 not, uh, they're not the most productive. Yeah, they are not at right. all. Dax, thanks for. Does anybody really win? No, nobody wins. Nobody wins. But <laughs> I won today because you were here, and I appreciate you taking time. Because I this is a lot of fun. Thank your you work for is having me. yeah. I really appreciate you. And guys, go read the show notes. Go follow Dax and all the great work he's doing. He's he's the reason one change maker of the year at APJ, but he's really doing it, and I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Thank you. See thanks you later. So Bye. I'm so grateful you joined in on this conversation. Subscribe where you're listening, leave a comment, connect with us on social media for more and all the links, you can find them in the show notes. We will see you at the next one.